Hunting is in my family's blood, and for my father Greg and I, it's our whole way of life. This is our playground, and these are our adventures. Oh yeah, baby! Paddle hard, go right! Oh, look at that shammy. Is that the big buck? Which one is it? <laughs> Going ballistic. Oh, what's that? Woo hoo, 14 inch bull. This is NZ Hunter Adventures. This week, we'll be trying our luck during the Red and Seeker Roar in the central North Island. Oh. As this country is heavily forested, we use trail cams to track animal activity to give an indication of the quality of stags in the area. The AJ's trail cams that were set up in Julian's red block suggested that the roar was now in full swing with a lot of wallowing and roaring being captured on camera. But of even more interest was a great couple of stags that had been captured, including a solid 11 pointer and a gnarly old 13 pointer. We were soon on the road and kicking off our North Island bush road trip. It's the 11th of April, which should be the heart of the Red Stag Roar in the North Island. And we've chucked on up to catch up with Julian. And we're hunting high roaring Red Stags in the Kaimai Mamaku Forest Park. It's just the three of us this trip, so we'll be taking turns on the camera. And guess who drew the short straw? Me. So I'll be up first. We've also got Major, the Chessie along for the trip. And we've got all our gear on our backs for two days, so we're just going to be hunting around through the bush, chasing the stags and camping where we get to. Let's get into it. It's pretty typical for, for this area to get that swirling wind. Yeah, yeah. But I think what we'll do is just quietly work our way through the block, through territories, and uh, 10th of 11th of April today, so if something makes some noise, we'll be then, into it. Then try and hopefully work the wind out. It's not too bad after all this rain, it's pretty quiet going underfoot yeah. at least. I think, I think a lot of this dripping as well will mask our, um, our sound yeah, working yeah. through. Yeah. We've worked our way around to an area where Julian's got onto stags previously, so it's time for the first roar of the trip. with that S bend roarer. Fifteen ninety nine. <laughs> I notice I notice you're roaring quite quietly. You like to keep the roars yeah. so they don't go too far in here. This country's very undulating. Yeah. And uh, just in the past just haven't got a response, you know, roaring. You have to be up close a lot of the time. Yeah. Just little moans. Yeah. <laughs> And we're just sort of working at a hollow at a time, aren't we? So you just want the wall to go into that hollow, not go too far so you don't run into them coming towards you. And you don't want the, you know, your roar too much, too loud. This time of year the stags mm -hmm. just push your hinds away, mm -hmm. sometimes silently, mm -hmm. so you don't even know they're there. So mm -hmm. you might as well get into the territory, get close. nice and close, get close, so he has to react. Yeah, exactly. You might, with a bit of luck, they'll be on the upwind side of us when we hit them. <laughs> Our GPSs have revolutionised bush hunting in this sort of flat rolling country. This makes it so much easier to keep track of where you're going and, and not get temporarily disorientated. <laughs> the wind's right now anyway, so it's got to be a start. He's dear, he might be sitting and standing in the sun, making the most of that oh, sunshine. I'd be surprised at all, man. Yeah. Might sneak up to those clearings. Just as the guys had predicted, for one animal the sun had proved too much to resist. 
Meh. The stag eventually twigged something was up and made a hasty departure off the clearing and back into the bush. That was just a classic, wasn't it? Just a classic. About a minute before we said, with this rain overnight, cold conditions. The bush all been cold. Stags, they'll be on the clearings and uh, standing in the sun. A minute later, there was one. <laughs> there's a rump sitting there, standing there. The rest is history. <laughs> not, just not, not good enough to shoot. A uh, two or three year old eight pointer, he was. Beautiful potential. Yeah, yeah. You'll see there, Julie and I were pretending to be a hind and a fawn. Julian was being the hind with the. Meh. And I was being the fawn with the. And it's far less intimidating for a stag, particularly a young stag, if you don't sound like a big old stag. And any stag can't resist coming to have a look to see what, what a hind and a fawn's up to, just in case the hind's in season. Must be getting on late morning, but peak of the raw, there should be some activity right through the day, so we'll oh, just keep, keep moving through. It's cool. It's a cool morning after several days of heavy rain, so uh, it'll be an action day. The stags will be going around all day today, redoing their rut pads and Resenting things up. Twelve thirty. Well, we found this nice sunny clearing that's had some heat in it for a little while, so the grass is dry. So might be time for a doer. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> it's just a bugger. They're not roaring more, eh? That's the, that's what we're missing. Just finished our leisurely lunch in this clearing and we've retired the old bugger to the camera. Time for some fresh legs and young eyes and hopefully a bit more like them this morning. It's predominantly a regrowth forest in here with a lot of younger trees but there's still the old big who are like this massive matai. I'm not a tree hugger but we can fit around half of it so it's a big sucker. Despite Julian's best effort to rack him up, we never received another reply from the stag. This is NZ Hunter Adventures. I think we'll just keep cutting through deer trees and something hopefully will make some noise. Unbelievable. There's no wind. It just feels like something should be going off, something should be roaring. But apart from those two early roars we've heard, nothing. Zilch. It's 4.30, an hour and a half of probably shooting and filming like left. 
So we'll see if the young guns can pull their finger out. it for today. We never caught up with that stag. We heard a hind bark and we're picking she's leading the stag away. But we found water. Muddy wallow water but water all the same so I think we'll just find a flat spot and put up the tent fly for the night. I've had a I've had a trail camera on this wallow for about two weeks. Picked up a nice 10 pointer and picked up a very very big pig. Probably the biggest pig I've seen in this bush. Maybe 200 pound maybe up to 250. You be the judge. Venison and bacon burgers for breakfast. Oh well, so much for the young guns been going to play Mary Hill this afternoon. The three stags we got onto today were all this morning. <laughs> anyway, we're camped in a primo spot tonight. There's not a breath of wind. Hopefully we're going to be kept awake all night with roaring. And it's time for some roast lamb and vegetables. Tomorrow's another day. Very quiet night, camped right in the middle of red stag country like this. You expect to be kept awake on the 11th of April and we think maybe we might have heard a couple of possible roars and we don't even know about that. <laughs> so things are very quiet. Hopefully the calm before the storm. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they're going to crank up. It's the morning of day two, 8am. Dad loved his time on the camera so much that he's volunteered to have another crack and we've heard Heard one stag this morning, so that's the plan. We're going to go chase him up. We don't know where he's gone, so we'll just keep keep on moving and hopefully we catch up with him the next hour. We're still heading in the direction of where we heard those roars from camp, but we just thought we'd explain how we're hunting with the wind. So we've come onto a bit of a knob. We've got a prevailing westerly wind coming up this side of the knob, but as soon as we drop over this back side, there'll be a back eddy coming up. So how do you reckon we should approach that with our hunting? Yeah, Willie, we'll use that back eddy stay up high on the leeward side and that will uh, give us a chance to hear from, from this side here. Once we've done that we'll cut over, cut over on top of the ridge, we'll hit that prevailing wind and then we get another bite of the cherry. So we'll end up doing a bit of a loop right round. Sounds good, that's bush hunting 101 with the wind, something you've got to think about constantly when you're up close in the bush. We've done our circuit round and we're now on the other side with the westerly wind coming up. We don't want to put any pressure on our master guide, but we haven't got onto a stack yet. That's uh, that's raw hunting. Sometimes they're on, sometimes they're not. It's a bee. We've heard logging trucks, we've heard bees, we've heard cows. They all sound like roaring stags. We're desperate. <laughs> he tells us they're roaring their guts off just a few days ago. We'll keep trying. We're just coming onto a good grassy clearing. I had a trail camera here for about ten days. Last, last few days of March into April, on that tree, a low angle, onto this wallow which is now a pond. And uh, we picked up a few nice animals including an 11 pointer. Uh, the 11 was quite a nice animal, had all its lower tines, very strong, and was just missing one of his tops. So he's probably a candidate if we bump into him in the next half hour. He's made a pad on the other side of the clearing, and then he's come here to use it to drink and a little bit of wallowing. Hasn't been too much wallowing in this in this wallow this year. Dog's winding, maybe he's just off in the bush. So we're picking, there hasn't been any hinds cycling in this area we've been hunting in the morning. Plenty of animal activity in terms of foot traffic, but nothing vocal. So we'll just carry on into a new area in the afternoon and it only takes one hind to be in heat and she's all on. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, we haven't struck roaring yet, but we could go around the next corner, there could be hind cycling and there'll be roaring activity. So we'll just keep plodding on. With lunch over, it's the old farts back on the job. So now we'll get amongst them this afternoon for sure. We've got a bad wind. <laughs> We've got about two hours to get the footage before it's dark, so better get going. No pressure.
Murphy was still on our back, and despite all the animal sign, any roaring activity was completely non-existent. Oh, I can't believe it, eh? I honestly cannot believe it. Back to the drawing board. Well, we spent a couple of days chasing around the reds in this bush, but other than those three stags yesterday morning before lunch, we haven't got near one since. <laughs> We've heard two stags roar very vaguely a couple of times today, and that's it. We haven't even bumped the deer today, have we? Haven't seen a bit of brown hide. So 11th, 12th of April, should have been peak of the red roar. No, nope, she's not, not happening here yet. Anyway, that's all good. We're pulling out and we're heading south and into some seeker country for a few days. So we'll see if they're on time. Our second destination for the trip was the bush-clad Ahimanua Ranges, renowned for producing some big seeker trophies over the years. The UO Vision trail cam we had running in the area showed that the stags were busy making rut pads and scenting up their territories. The roar also looked to be in full swing with both territory hee-haw calls and the more aggressive single calls being captured on camera. A sight to get the heart pumping of every seeker hunter. And with a good number of hinds in the area to occupy the stags, it looked like we might be in the money. We've trucked south from the Kaimais, and Julian's picked up his mate Shane, and now we're in the Ahamanos for the seeker roar, and this is the first seeker roar I've done for the year. That was a pretty rusty one, didn't get very high, did I? Still sounded the part though. I've replied to my rule. I'll reply to that. <laughs> Getting drunk enough tea this morning, my voice isn't lubricated enough. Nothing here, so we're heading north. <laughs> Somewhere that way. We're heading that way. That's the first seeker reply for the year. He single called out over that way a couple of times. Not much else happening though. We were going to go this way, but if the roaring's that way, we're going that way. <laughs> He's coming through too clear. He's not on this side. He's on that other side. He must be on that first spur which comes down. It might be even that one we can see. I don't know if you can see the one through there. Just trying to figure out just which ridge we think he's on, but he's going quite well. But we've heard him roar. Just stay above him. Oh, I'll definitely stay above him. With the stag now on our radar, it was just a matter of pinpointing his roar. This is NZ Hunter Adventures. It's not too far away. Mm. It's coming through clearly, but it's too clear to be on our side. And this is real close, and he's not that close. I still think he's on that next face, though. I have to presume that probably was him. And he is definitely down and over an edge. I hope he's lower than this, because we're going to struggle if he's up this high. We've had a major detour, because we don't have a thermal or a back eddy yet. We've just got that gentle southwesterly drift going through. Yeah, we need, we need to go right more. No, there's two. There's two stags, isn't there? Which is what we thought initially. That one's not very far away. He's just down here. Yeah, we're definitely not going any further. We've got round above him now, and he's right where we thought he was on the top of one of these ridges, and he's going real well. He'd be 
inside 100 yards, straight down here. We've now got the sou'wester quartering in on us. If there's any thermal, it should be coming up. If there's any back eddy, it should be coming up. We're pretty well positioned, and this ridge is reasonably clear, and the dogs very keen. <laughs> so anyway, Shane and I are going to sit back and roar while Julian and Willie the cameraman go in. Change of plan. I'll let Shane go on, on this one. I've got my eye on another stag. We dropped down to within 50 yards from the roaring we could hear and began a stakeout, hoping one of the stags would walk through into view. I think he's just ducked up and over that next little blip there, isn't he? Shall we um, get Greg to give us a bit of a roar? Make sure we can pinpoint him a bit better, eh? chasing a couple of lines around. Unfortunately, a high not far below us and some thick cover had gone undetected, and with the shriek of a seeker alarm squeal, the game was most likely over. There's two ways you can go in on a roaring stag. The way I normally prefer to go in is to roar all the way in. Then any noise you make as you're going in, they think you're a stag and they're less likely to spook from it. Although sometimes, if it's a hind who's not standing yet, she might move off because she doesn't want another stag coming and chasing her around. That's the downside of doing it. Or the stag might take his hind away, same thing. But if you do what the boys did then and go in quiet, the only problem then is you're more likely to bump something on the way because they haven't heard you coming roaring. You bump them like that hind, spook, and the game's over anyway. So 50-50 call, they chose the wrong one. <laughs> Although disappointed about spooking the hub of morning roaring activity, we set up a trail camp in an attempt to catch a second glimpse of the stags She's and look to lunch to raise the spirits among the team. The thing about territories, people tend to think about stag territories the way a human thinks, and they're not. You know, they're not a plot of ground. Well, that's my territory. It doesn't work like that. It's just a, a general area that he leaves his pads around. We might as well just stalk our way wrong as we go round here, down and do about what you guys did.
The afternoon's hunting proved fruitless, and we were soon hacking a track back to camp in diminishing daylight. We filled our water bottles in the last creek we've crossed, and now we're climbing the last hill back up to camp. That's it for day one. This beats our usual dry packet porridge breakfast on the hill. Fresh hot pancake and homemade raspberry jam. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That is good. You gotta shoot that big stare, you gotta eat well. <laughs> so, second morning in Seeker country. We heard a few single calls from camp early this morning. So, I've just cut around a couple hundred metres. Now it's the first roar, first roar, secret roar I've done in over a year, so it could be a little rusty. <laughs> and it was. And if you haven't picked up, Dad's now on the camera and I'm running the roaring horn. No reply, but I think he's a couple more ridges round, so we'll just keep getting north. Although no reply was heard, Major's nose was telling us that something had snuck in to investigate my roar. Nothing in reply to my roar, and then we just heard, heard some movement in the fern. And next thing you know, a nice, how many points? Young, young eight point stag just came round, was standing a mere 20 yards away. I was just doing some quiet mews, and he was just standing there for about a minute. And then I think he finally figured out, <laughs> he didn't like the look of us, and just he's just gone down the ridge, not too spooked up. The stag had snuck back in for a second look and was very lucky he wasn't a few years older. You can just see his right antler flicking a few ears looking at us. Pretty hard to see. Eventually he gained some sense and moved away from the potential threat. This is NZ Hunter Adventures. We just had a fantastic encounter with a lovely young stag. I'm pointing, you reckon, eh? I recognise that stag. I'm pretty sure it was the same stag we saw last year, Willie. As a six. As a six. Now he's a nine. It's developing well. We're after something a bit bigger and a bit more mature. And that's the way hunting goes sometimes. Couldn't quite put it together on a good trophy stag over the last two days in this Ahamanawa country. Left a nice three and a half year old stag on the hill and he'll be a beauty in a couple of years. We're now packing up, we're going to relocate and try our luck somewhere else. Pulling out of the Ahamanawas, our last crack at the seeker roar was to be had in one of our favourite roar haunts at the foothills of the Kawaka Range.
Mum's trail cam had caught a magnificent looking stag on camera and she was eager to get in and have a look for him. Oh, we've had a night at home, repack a gear and into the eastern car workers. Willie's had to stay behind to do a bit of work and Mum's tagging along instead. We heard a bit of roaring on the way in first thing, so we'll drop a gear around the corner here and go and see what we can get onto. It's pretty thick, mingy, mingy, scrub, rubbish country here, so it's real close encounter stuff, but makes it challenging. <laughs> but we've got the master roarer on board. I don't know about that. <laughs> we've left our packs at camp. I'm number one shooter and roarer, and Greg's on the camera. We've heard a stag roaring down here. You might have just heard it. And so we're going to go in and have a look. I'm all excited now. Two stags down there, one doing the single call and the second one doing the hee haw. The single caller sounded like it's about 100 metres away or so. So as the going isn't too bad down below, we're going to close the gap and see if we can find him. Some good rubbing up and down here. Hopefully it's a sign of an eight-pointer. <laughs> into some really scrubby, yucky, shitty stuff. <laughs> He's got the upper hand on us now. He's moved further down, probably following a hind who doesn't want to be caught between two stags. So we're going to have to go down further. We've just heard him again, just above us. So we're going to try and climb out very quietly and see if we can catch up with him. He's gone above us now. We might have to change tactics. The wind's starting to swirl, so I don't like our chances. This stag most definitely had a hind on heat and was going absolutely ballistic. Where'd you hit him? Between the eyes. I couldn't believe he came back into my wall again. I thought that was him gone and I thought you were going to be pissed off with me. That was an awesome eight pointer. Well done, Zeke. That was the most amazing up close and personal hand to hand combat seeker hunt I think I've ever been on. <laughs> Unbelievable. We stalked the stag for about an hour and a half down this valley. Got up on this terrace, Fee gave a roar, and you could hear him mewing and chasing his hind around in there. And then he just came right up, 
five meters away. I had the camera on him, but he couldn't get a shot then, and he crashed off, and he, he roared again, and he came back up again, and, and she managed to shoot him. But I don't think I had him on film at the time of the, of the shot. But anyway, that was hell of an exciting. He's a cracker stag, quite a small bodied seeker stag, but a beautiful head on him. He's actually nine points. He's got the classic eight points, lovely brows, good trays, great outer tops and inner tops, and then he's got a little, a little ninth tine off his, off his brow tine there. So yeah, that's a hunt we won't forget in a hurry. As it turns out, Mum's stag was the exact same stag she had caught on her trail cam, given away by its unique basil snag. Time to load up and head for camp. Looks like I'm going to have some fun getting this back to camp. While mum had been away hunting, her trail cam had also been busy, catching yet another good looking stag on film. I began my walk in under the moonlight to join mum and dad for the following day. And as it turns out, I wasn't the only one looking for action, with mum's trail cam capturing a very rare sight. Dad rang me up yesterday after mum got a good stag saying, the stags are nutting off, get in here, they're roaring their tits off. So I finished my jobs, walked in last night, late last night, actually early hours of the morning, under the moonlight, and I wasn't to be disappointed. They are roaring, they are going for it. So dad's on the camera, I'm on the gun. Is and I'll do the roaring, <laughs> I got them yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> mum's on a hot run, so she reckons she's going to bring them up to me. <laughs> Let's go. Right, Mum, the first roar of the day. This is NZ Hunter Adventures. What's that on the clearing? Did you find us? It looks like a six pointer. Just in the bushes there. Is he a young one or what is he? Yeah, he looks like six to me. I've just seen the first stag of the day. Young six pointer, was he? Just yes. came out yeah. came out to investigate our roar, I think. Not sure if he's the roar we heard, but we'll give it some time. We've just parked up with a bit of a view. We can see a few scattered clearings and we're just waiting to hear where the roaring comes from. Look, on the clearing, on the clearing. Oh, there he is on the left hand it's side. It's a good one, it's a good one. Where the hell's mum? Psst. <coughs> it's a shooter. That's the big six, isn't it? Yeah. It's the big six. the range. You just missed it. There was a big six on that clearing, but I, I didn't know the range and I didn't really want to push it. What's the range? 320 to the bottom of that clearing. 320. Bummer. That was the big hybrid six we saw last year. <laughs> We've been trying to get this big six for years because he's a dominant stag, always has hinds, but he's only a six pointer. So he's the perfect animal to come take out of the gene pool and let some better stags serve those hinds. Was he 3.35, somewhere about there, we'll do the trip. The 
they're right there somewhere. You can hear you roaring just off in the bush. Been waiting here for a good hour. So we're just gonna wait and see what happens. Early afternoon, a mature looking stag appeared on the clearing, and for once we were ready. Okay, I'm wrong. Looks like a pretty big stag. You tell me when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready whenever you are. Not while he's walking. Stop, stop, give him stop. A stop. Yeah. Ready? Wait, wait. Ready? No, wait. Okay, I'm ready. Failing to hold a steady rest, the shot had sailed harmlessly underneath the mane on his neck. Bummer. Oh, man. I don't really know what to say. It all came together, the stag walked out, and I just botched it. We didn't plan on that. Better have a go for some of these others in the bush before they shut up as well. Well, to cut a long story short, we couldn't quite get it all together on those bush stacks. Got up close, lots of roaring, lots of action, but didn't get a glimpse of them. Anyway, Mum's decided she's got her stag, she's going to take antlers, pack, meat, head out tonight. That'll leave Dad and I to have one last crack in the morning, because there's still a bit of action happening down there. So Major, it's down to the boys to finish the job. Well, good luck. We heard no roaring this morning, so we're going to head to a clay pan and overlook some of the broken scrub country. That'll give us something to look at and hopefully we'll be able to pinpoint an animal and then go after him. Still no replies. It's all quiet this morning. So it's now 10 a.m. We've been watching all the country we finally picked up a stag on one of our clearings here, 300 yards. A big uneven six by the looks of it, so hopefully today I can do the business. <laughs> Level. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm on him. There's no wind, is there? Just middle of the shop. No wind, I can see the speak of. <laughs> Down to the count. He's absolutely out to the count. Well, we couldn't really ask for much more. We found a good mature stag, a bit wonky by the look, so a perfect one to take out of the gene pool. And I managed to make the shot before this wind got up. So the plan now is to whip down, grab him, and be back for lunch at camp. We are you, Mum. Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> bye bye, GoPro. Good dog. What's that? Good dog. Yeah, Mad Major found him a pretty easy track. Water specimen. One, two, three, four, five point seeker stag. <laughs> Definitely needed removing from the breeding herd. And he's in pretty rough condition. He's been a busy boy over this raw. 
but he'll still make good casserole and plenty of good sausages. So let's get to it. Mum may have got the best stag for this raw, but Dad and I had the last laugh. All the meat's now in our packs, and that's the end of our raw hunting for this year. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next week. Come on, Major. A huge thank you must go out to our loyal family of sponsors. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to bring the beautiful New Zealand backcountry and the majestic animals that roam it into your living rooms every week. We rely on their products to perform out in the field, so you can be assured if we're using it, it's good gear that will stand the test of time. To keep up to date with the show, give NZ Hunter a like on Facebook. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel to gain a sneak peek at extra footage and teasers. And of course, grab a copy of the latest NZ Hunter magazine, The Bible of Hunting in New Zealand, to catch these and many more adventures.